in this house. History was made. Hardcore was born. A revolution began with men and women putting their mind, bodies, and souls on the line. In this house, a legacy was born. Tonight, new individuals and familiar faces enter the arena to make a name for themselves going extreme with a main event that will leave you breathless. Tonight, we give one last goodbye. As Hardcore comes home. Now, Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore 7. Gentlemen, welcome to House of Hardcore Live from Philadelphia, the very first internet iPay-per-view. I am Vic Triblianti, and of course, we'll be joined by a special guest, Matt Stryker, which you just saw moments ago. And we are ready for the opening contest here in the ECW Arena, the home of the original ECW from 1993. until 2001, and one of those major players, you're looking at him, Danny Doring, a former ECW Tag Team Champion with his partner then, Roadkick. And Matt Stryker gonna join me, my special guest of the evening, Matthew. Hey, Victor, how are you? It's nice to be fine. here. Yeah, you look at Danny Doring, he uh, debuted in this building for Cyberslam 97 against Jerry Lynn. It's really special for a lot of these guys to come back to this arena to compete maybe for the last time in front of some of the most fickle wrestling fans on the face of God's green earth. And Danny Doring picked up a victory actually at House of Hardcore 1, the master of the Wham Bam. Thank you, ma'am. And he is back home 
here in the ECW Arena in Philly. And his opponent. of an opening contest. You can feel how special these moments are for these athletes. I'll give you a quick little Max Moon fact. Stevie Richards was in the first ever Eastern Championship wrestling match to ever appear on television and listen to the response. It was all the way back in 1992 and uh, the fans here in Philly have a long memory. Stevie Richards, as we just mentioned, Matt did, debuted in 1992. Featured in every major wrestling promotion. We'll touch on that as these two now, veterans of the squared circle staring down one another here to open up HOH7. Stevie's going to have a height and agility advantage. Danny obviously has the weight as well as the strength. We'll see how it plays out. And obviously, Matt, a long history, not just here in this arena, but between these two guys. crowd already showing some favoritism towards Stevie Richards. They both tie up middle of the ring and Danny Doring showing some of that power muscling back Stevie Richards into the corner. Yeah, Stevie's got those long limbs, long arms, long legs. Danny's going to have to get inside on Stevie, almost as if it were Mike Tyson fighting Muhammad Ali. Pardon the reference. Talk about Danny Doring's win in House of Hardcore 1. Stevie Richards losing effort at House of Hardcore 3. And again, that size, that strength advantage from Danny Doring. Oh. That time not a clean break, and again, a vicious chop right to the chest. Oh, here we go now. <laughs> Rich with a big hip toss. Yeah, and trouble getting Danny there. over there. <laughs> you know, the crowd is going to be just as much a part of this roster as the wrestlers themselves. The crowd is a factor. The arena itself is a factor. So many things just going through the minds of these athletes. And we take a look at these two for a moment. The opening match here, two guys that cut their teeth in this arena. And they they look to make a name for themselves when they first started years ago as Danny Doring trying to exit the ring for a moment. And tonight is about those new stars rising here in, e in the old ECW arena. Well, the arena in and of itself was a place of opportunity for a lot of young wrestlers all throughout the 90s and the early 2000s. So the arena in and of itself is a special place. It's in the Madison Square Garden of the independent scene, if you will. Danny Dorn now just putting the boots to Stevie Richards. There's a little extra leverage with that bottom rope. This is the same crowd that once threw batteries at Santa Claus in the NFL game. <laughs> and Danny Doring, looks like Danny Doring is feeding off this raw emotion from this Philly crowd. Well, I mean, that's Danny Doring. He, he was made here in this arena. Cover here. Nope. Oh, look at that. Just a forearm right to the face. Now goes for the pin. First pinfall of HO7 is a one as Stephen Richards easily gets out. And of course, you. Uh, can't help watching Danny Doring and think about his partner Roadkill, think about the great tag team wars they had in this building. And speaking of great tag team wrestlers throughout the night, we'll shout out the ones that aren't forgotten. Here we'd like to give a moment to Pitbull Anthony. Your auntie, of course, was a great, great presence in this building, and you are not forgotten. Stevie Richards trying to use this crowd to get up, and just a blatant pull to the air. Referee Hanson seeing it, trying to talk to Danny Doring, just walks away, looking out into the crowd. Turned his back as well, uh -oh. schoolboy here. 
almost got a three and then a nice vicious clothesline laying out Richards. You'll see how quickly Danny goes for the cover there. Now Danny realizes that, that Danny is almost aware that he's, he's in his own head. Danny Dorn kind of toying with this crowd. And Dorn, a guy who is trained by the who's who of that original EC. Here we go. Now Richards getting the upper hand. And now they're trading blows. Dorian with two big rights. Richards answers back with one of his own. And another. Forearm. Is Dorian with the upper hand? Richards, nice reversal. And a couple of clotheslines of his own. As Richards going for a neck break Ooh. in the center of the ring. There's a rough landing for Danny. Stevie Richards, also a former ECW Tag Team Champion, has held 24 notable titles since his debut in the early 90s. And he picks up, oh. up some sidewalk slam center of the ring. Look at the leg, oh. only a two count. Is Dorian able to come out the back door <laughs> before his shoulders hit for that count of three? Crowd starting to call for that Stevie kick. That's a great shot by our cameraman, but anyway, you look at it, it's no fun. Oh, rough landing for Richards in the corner, and Dory now has a little bit of time, Matt, where he might need to regroup himself. Yeah, Do Doring's uh, size here is gonna play into Danny's advantage if he can switch the momentum. There you go, shouts out Roadkill with the taunt. His partner for the... Tag team champion. Nice. A huge leg drop off the top. Anaconda. Go for the cover. Ooh. Can you imagine the bragging rights around the locker room to say that, that you won the opening match here at the arena for House of Hardcore 7? You, Danny would really walk around as the cock of the walk if he was able to pin Stevie there. And Danny Doring a little surprised as Stevie Richards able to kick out after that big leg drop off the top. Oh. Richards trying to get back into it as he is taking a lot off up and down. There's the bareback. And Dorian taking maybe too much time for a ring veteran. He should know. You can't show both. You should try to pick up the win. No, and all the anxiety that comes after going bareback is now riveting and rippling through Danny Doring. And notice no hook of the leg by Danny Doring as Steven Richards now. Again, taking time is Dorian Richards can regroup himself. Now just blatantly taunting Richards. Danny mocking Stevie now. You notice the size of the ring is gonna come into play tonight. Where the athletes position themselves for their moves is very important to keep note of. Right there, look at that. Stevie in the middle takes it back. Yeah. Stevie kick! A Stevie kick! Richards hooks the leg! of hardcore history here in the old ECW arena. Steven Richards victorious defeating Danny Dory. And Doran right now, Steven Richards looking down. These two is such a history, Matt. You gotta wonder what we play through the mind of Steven Richards and Doring on here. I've known both these guys a long time. They're tough, but they're fair, and they are brothers under the banner of the arena, and tonight they are brothers under the banner of House of Hardcore. It's just a question of if Danny wants to uh, brother it up. Is he going to do it? Is he not going to do it? What do you think, Matt? All the years, all the history, all the blood, everything embodied right there. Thanks for a great match, guys. What a sign of respect. Well, Steven Richards victorious over.
Vancouver, Danny Doring. And I'm not breaking any news here, Matt. Tommy Dreamer has said that his opponent that's scheduled for tonight was supposed to be EC3 due to injury. EC3 will not be available tonight. But Tommy Dreamer has assured me, he's assured this crowd, and assured all those watching right now on internet pay-per-view that there will be surprises, Ladies and he and always next match is one ball with a 30-minute time limit, your referee, Sean Hansen. For this young man who grew up watching and idolizing all the stars that came into this building, this is the first time that Better Than You, Brian Myers, is walking into the arena. How will that affect this young man's psyche? We'll explore that as this match goes on. Both going back and forth, hard working, and both got their breaks due to one man. That man is Tommy Dreamer. Yeah, for both of these stars, first for Christian York, Tommy Dreamer handpicked Christian York and his partner Joey Matthews uh, almost 20 years ago to be a tag team in the early days of ECW. Both those two guys have gone on to great things. As far as Brian Myers goes, as a kid, all he ever wanted to do was be a wrestler signed a WWE contract, was only down in the developmental system for just about a year, made his way up to the main roster, became a tag team champion, just had so much going for him, and then all of a sudden, the contract has expired, and now Brian Myers is out on his own for the first time in his career. Let's see what he's got. And this is the first ever meeting between these two, and before we get too far into it, everyone watching on internet pay-per-view, interact with us on Twitter, at House of Hardcore at Trav923, at Matt underscore Stryker underscore. Send pictures. And send us tweets with the hashtag HOH7, hashtag HOH Philly. We're going to read some of these tweets later on throughout the show as these two getting started here. Myers, York, and Brian Myers, you talked about. Formerly known as Kurt Hawkins in the WWE, former WWE Tag Team Champion. Spent time you mentioned developmental. Christian York, on the other hand, he's taken no, sh no shortcuts. He's done things the right way, Matt. ECW, WWE, TNA, and we have him here now in HOH. Yeah, it's the old saying, it ain't, it ain't where you're from, it's where you're at. And right now where we're at is HOH here in Philly. And it's just, you know, with all these opportunities that the arena has provided, I, I can't help but think about guys like the late great Eddie Guerrero or Dean Malenko, Rey Mysterio, Psychosis. When those matches were on, we were all glued to the TV. We may not have known them then, but we sure as heck knew them right after. That may be the case for Brian Myers if he can pull off a win. Brian Myers, Christian York, Matt, I, I look at you for a moment. You take a look at, at two young warriors standing in the ring right now, first time meeting each other, both with a long history in this business as a go behind stop by York. And now Myers controlling that arm as York now with a nice reversal. What's the feeling out process going to be like early on in this contest? For a long time in this building, wrestling was king. And when you have no stories to tell and no products to show, you can always rely on the wrestling. And that's what it's all about here right now. What a picture-perfect drop kick delivered right underneath the jaw by Brian Myers. You look at both of these guys, and now they have an opportunity. They have the freedom to show the world what they can do. There are no chains that are binding these two young men. And I think it's just, again, it's what independent wrestling is all about. Opportunity. No politics, no BS, just wrestling. Chop there by York, and now a couple of quick strikes right to the midsection, right to the upper region. Ooh, nice. nice spinning kick right to the face. And Christian York listening to the cheers from the fans here in Philly. 
the wrestling landscape has changed so much with the emergence of places like House of Hardcore, like Lucha Underground, like Ring of Honor, and PWG. This type of wrestling is where it's at. Another nice kick, and he's got some educated feet in his Bulldog, modified Bulldog, Myers down, middle of the ring, Ooh. and then two feet right to the side of the face. As York picking up some aggression here, and, and York to me, when we talk about his past, he is the definition of perseverance. Oh, absolutely, you know, I mean, especially in this business, when people tell you you can't do something, you say, F you, I can. Christian York's a great athlete. Brian Myers sees that he has to take the fight onto the floor, maybe change up the game plan a little bit. And Myers put York into the steel steps, and so now we're going to send him into the side of the ring. And, and, and Brian Myers, a guy who we ran through his credentials already, out on his own, as you mentioned, he seems to have found a new, so, a new source of confidence as he whips York almost into the barricade. Oh. He stopped with a sidekick. And again, those feet nice. as York. Hey. And I say Moonsaw off the guardrail. And listen. pay-per-view and this is the Philadelphia crowd is York gonna send Myers back in see if he can get a cover here and a count the leg only got a two on Myers as Christian York talked to him earlier tonight in the back said he was gonna be smash mouth and take it to Myers and he has done just that in the early game trying to follow him in. great block there by Myers notice the placement of Myers hands into the crook of the knees it allows you to control your opponent and that I don't have to explain to anybody that's just painful as York was looking possibly for a monkey flip out of the corner. And now Myers measuring York. And now just getting right on top. Great point there. It looked as if Myers was trying to will York to his feet, but instead Myers realized my opponent's down. Why not attack him while he's down? But right here, talking to the fans, I understand it's your first time in this building, but you need to focus on Christian York, Bry. And, and Myers, this is that new, more aggressive wrestling style that, that, that we've seen from him lately. Oh, nice, nice suplex and a float over to the cover of the leg. And again, York able to get out at two, but th this is that new confidence, this is that new aggression that Brian Myers is showing. Look at that little veteran maneuver there by Christian York sitting up, taking his shoulders off the mat. Brian Myers here does something that's really good. Instead of thinking, what am I gonna do next? He's wearing down his opponent while he plans his strategy. And York really trying to get back to his feet and does, he's doing vertical base. Couple of right hands to the midsection. And then, oh, nice move by Myers. A European leg sweep, a modified version of it. Takes his opponent off the field. And again, that's your point. Taking time to talk to the crowd. Falling in with a nice elbow drop. Again, we talk about placement there. If Christian York was in the middle of the ring, maybe Brian Myers would have gotten a three count. But York's ring generalship positions him in the right place at the right time. And the Prince of Queens now going back, trying to put his weight on York. And as you said earlier, trying to think a few steps ahead as Myers has been pulling out some of the stops so far. And Deltrick trying to wear down York in the center of the ring. Ooh, nice there by Myers as New York switched position. Myers switched his hold. New York now following it up ahead of Steve. That time went for again. No. European leg sweep again. Nobody there. And here's some of that athleticism from Christian York, and he may fly. Nope. Took the clothesline, gave him a line of his own. Followed by another one. Momentum starting to pick up here. And while it may look simple and rudimentary, the three clotheslines in a row really disorients your opponent. You can see Myers is breathing heavy. Here we go. Back elbow. Oh, nice. Right to the side of the face, and now the crowd getting behind Christian York. He's been wrestling since a teenager. He's trying to earn his spot, and he's trying to make a name for oh. himself here in House of Hardcore. High impact move, York with the pin. No. Again, another slick move by York to cradle the left arm of Myers so that Myers couldn't grab the ropes. York getting that crowd behind him yet again. I don't know if frustration is starting to build in right now, man. Well, Christian York has been in many of these wars in this environment. Brian Myers has not. Wow, nice. Big slam. Ooh. Showing that perseverance. So, Vic, I gotta ask you, man, you having a good time? Having a great time. I had goosebumps when this show began. Thinking about everything that's going on here, everything that 
we could see tonight, and this was one of the highlights for me, two guys that are young, trying to make a name for themselves, kind of going back to what ECW was about in the early 90s. As Myers would love to make a name for himself with a big victory here at HOH, as would Christian York. Oh, nice. Little rolling Liger kick. How Myers is still on his feet. Oh, Pele kick from Myers. Both guys are down. These two trading blows. It might be who can get the cover first, and Myers does. No. Myers didn't have nearly enough weight on Christian York's shoulders there. And that was a lackadaisical cover on Myers' part. And he may be starting to think, what does he need to do? And as he looks at that right arm, and now looking to go to the top rope, and it's only no, one thing on his mind. It's no secret Brian Myers grew up a fan of Shawn Michaels, and a lot of the movements and the mannerisms are reminiscent, so I can only imagine he was going for the elbow there. And he took too much time as York back to his feet. Again, picked by Tommy Dreamer to be the future of wrestling, Christian York. Hang on, I think someone's about to die. Looking for a possible suplex on Myers, who is blocking it. Yeah, with his right hand, Brian Myers is holding the top rope, and his foot is wrapped around the turnbuckle. Now Myers is free, so is York. Myers goes up over York, trying to counter. Trap, oh, backslide maybe? No. Oh. That backslide DDT there. Oh. Go for the cover. This the could be it. swing. Yes. A great win by Christian York. Well deserved. I think the right guy won. And I've known Brian Myers my entire life. He's good, but the kid whines and cries a little bit. So maybe Brian will go back and watch this match and realize where he took too much time or where he made the mistakes. Can't make a mistake with a guy like Christian York. Congratulations, buddy. And some fans believe Christian York that it's a travesty. He's never been given a chance, but he's been given a chance with a huge victory here at House of York. That's what it's all about here. Christian York saying hi to some old friends and some new friends. And we hope you're enjoying yourself here at House of Hardcore. Looks like uh can't see it, but Myers has a big boo-boo face on. <laughs> we can get a shot of that. That'll be great. There you go. Thank you, Sometimes this kid could be such a bitch.
the world. Anything can happen, and when it does happen, it happens here at House of Hardcore. I hope if you're watching at home, you're sinking in right now. Do you guys expect the unexpected now for the rest of the night? Oh my God. of hardcore a man that many say was wrongfully terminated from his contract now has the freedom to punch gringos like this right in the face Victor, that this isn't the only surprise. 
No, and, and, and to touch base on what was said by Tommy Dreamer himself, Ethan Carter the third not going to be here tonight to face Tommy Dreamer. He said, expect the unexpected, expect the surprises. And that was just one. I can only imagine. I can't even fathom what else we're going to see tonight. I'm looking at my Twitter, but it's a lot different than your Twitter. Well, you so asked just the picture. I don't want Okay. Matt Striker! Matt Striker! Matt Striker! Matt Striker! Matt Striker! Matt Striker! What else can happen here inside the arena? 2006 ESPN2's Arena of the Year, by the way. You've said that to Ladies five and gentlemen, times. our next hey, match is a six-man tag team match. 30-minute time limit. Your referee, Da Diamond Dietrich. What is this? Ladies and gentlemen, it's your state first. Weighing in at 184 pounds. From Boston, Massachusetts, all good Anthony Green. His tag team partner, accompanied by the Dupre's, from Intercourse, Pennsylvania, weighing in at 252 pounds, Vic Delicious. And the final member of their team, from Newburgh, New York, weighing in at 320 pounds, Ben. The Beast Ortiz! So let, let me get everything here. The, the two women in the front are known as the Duprees. The Duprees. And there's two of them, so they're double Duprees. So can I just shorten it and call them double Ds? Why do you always take it there? You have to take I it I mean, there. it's the Duprees. I mean, you can call them whatever you want, but right now, Vic Delicious, who thinks he's from Andrew Lloyd Webber's Jesus Christ Superstar, is teaming with the very young Anthony Green and Ben the Beast. Ortiz here tonight in six-man tag action. Double Ds. Come on, man. All right. Their opponents. Weighing in a total combined weight of 483 pounds from the Isle of Manhattan, Detective Dan Barry, Detective Bill Corr, Team Tremendous. Two guys coming in the ring right now. Team Tremendous, look like they're from Miami Vice. But hang on a second, there's three guys on the other team and only two guys here. I was a history major, not a math major, but we're missing someone, no? Well, I failed fifth grade math and asked my mom that, so yeah, I, I guess you're right. Uh, maybe they're counting uh, Bill Carr, who you see right there on your screen, maybe is two guys. I don't know, but you gotta look at the mustachioed one, Dan Barry, very exciting. And Energetic, charismatic guy, as is Bill Carr, will be the and their tag team partner. Here he comes. Oh shit! I'm scared. I'm scared. Hey! hey. hey. from Little Italy. He is the Sicilian shooter, Little. Guido Maritano, another ECW original, and it's ironic that someone who, who came up here through these ranks is in a match with so many young, talented stars of tomorrow. Yeah, Guido Maritano debuted in 1994 as James Stone, and since then he's gone on to have a great career and uh, has a cute little son named Nicholas who I like to beat up every time I see when, when Guido's not around, obviously. But Guido Maritano embodies what ECW was about. It was about opportunity. You didn't need to be 6'10 and all jacked up. If you could wrestle, then you had a place. And that still should be the case here tonight. So Matt, let's take a look at these. Let's take a look at these. Oh, wait a minute. What, what's going it's on? assuming the position. He does, it's, not, it's not a pet. Not, I mean, what's he doing? Hey, listen, it's the arena. It's Philly. It's a Saturday night. You just assume the position, okay? All right. I'll, I'll take your word for it. You take a look at both these teams. Just kind of break apart both. You got one team there with Big Ben or okay. Big Beast Ortiz, Vic Delicious. Yeah, they're young. And then you got a more veteran type group. Well, first I look at the size of the fighters in the fight, and it looks like the team on the right, what's called Vic Delicious's team, is certainly going to have the size advantage here, the power of Ben Ortiz and Vic Delicious. 
Guido Maritato is the best wrestler, not only in this ring, but maybe in this building tonight. So this young Anthony Green is going to uh, really get tested here. What do you know about Anthony? You know, I know a little bit about Anthony. I know that he earned a spot after an appearance at an HOH seminar. I got all that information at houseofhardcore.net. Here's some of that, that wrestling you just alluded to. Helicopter float over, front chancery, gator rolled there by Guido Maritato. Inside control, Anthony Green to his credit, back up to his feet, digging the elbow in, trying to break the waist lock. Stand and switch now, Guido traps the arm, oh, goes for the Fujiwara arm bar. Well, you see the torque on that, on that left shoulder, wisely for a young competitor, found the ropes very quickly. Uh, when we talk about six-man tag uh, action, as we see the beast Ben Ortiz, we can only be reminded of the late great Bam Bam Bigelow. Of course, his partner Chris Candido, again, all throughout the night, I'll be throwing out these names because these names should not be forgotten. Now, the referee's been a little lenient here after Green just shoved him. He usually don't touch the man wearing the zebra stripes. Trying to make out what they're saying. He's a person. You know, we're in a very anti-bullying era here, so the referee, he's a person too. I'm sure you've loved every referee you've come across. <laughs> yeah, sure. Only Charles Robinson and Mike Chioda. They were my favorites. Now I like Marty Elias from Lucha Underground. He's cool, too. Now, is this a wise move on the uh, part of Young Green to talk a little smack back to a veteran? Uh, listen, in, in any oh, competition, wow. when you start to talk smack, it just tells you that your opponent is running out of options. And now he's going down to the referee's position, wants to have a little amateur match. Guido steps on the hand and we're doing some wrestling. He goes right back, quick cover. Tried to hook the leg. Was Green able to come out? And Green's cocky. He's young. He's arrogant. Right now, he's getting taken to school. Another two count. For all you young wrestlers watching out there or just fans at home, you'll notice the placement of Little Guido's hips and feet. He constantly tries to keep his hips lower than his opponent. That gives him leverage. Guido Maritano in this match, five foot seven, but you don't ever want to count him out of a fight because he can take it to the best of him. And right now, he is really taking Green to school. Yeah, one of the toughest guys I know, Guido Maritano. And again, how much this referee get oh. the ref's Italian. <laughs> it is now. We Italians stick together. <laughs> oh. Big bad, big delicious now. The Joe Devola of this match. Just completely unpredictable and freakish. Vic, Crazy, if you will. Big delicious now using some of that strength. I don't think I ever saw a formal tag made. Really neat. Saw one there, though. Oh, Dan Barry made the blind tag yes, there. And I don't know if the uh, other guys see it. And there he goes to the top, big drop kick. And now Vic Delish is out, and Green again all by himself has buried a big suplex center of the ring. And a great suplex into the kip up. Nice oh, dive. Side dive. And to keep the ECW connection, Dan Barry was trained by Mikey Whipwreck, so there has to be some feelings for Dan to be in this building as well. And a lot of people look at you know Dan Barry and don't really see much of an athlete, but he just showed you some of that surprise athleticism. Hey, don't judge a book by its cover. As he's gonna tag in his tag team partner, Bill Carr, That's Team right. Tremendous. Yep. Bill Carr had a developmental deal with WWE. Uh, that expired, and now Bill Carr is telling me to shut up. Pittsburgh. If Erwin Arshyster and the big boss man had a child, it would be Bill Carr. Call for one more. Oh, this young kid, Mr. Green here, his poor chest. <laughs> How about the fact that the sound came before the hit? The speed traveled faster than this crazy. The car picking him up with a big slam, and again, you see the teamwork. Yeah, the slam in that part of the ring. Ow! That's a hard part of the ring right there, the corners. Guido going to get into the action. Biggest feat in all of wrestling, Guido Maritano. Covered account, no hook of the leg. Are those pineapples on Dan's shirt? Uh, maybe mm, bananas? Pineapples. pineapples. Yeah, yeah. I don't like pineapples, unless they're grilled. I like grilled enough, pineapples. Enough out of you. Go out of that there. Look, look, one of the double Ds grabbed the foot. No, one of the Dupree's. His, his foot got caught one in of one of the double Ds. Oh, he's throwing it out. Wait a minute. The Dupree's. No, wait, show them heading the mat more. Oh, yeah, that's a good shot. Great. Stay Whoever's right there. in the truck right now. Thank Just, you. Shush. One of her 
knees almost popped out of the blouse. Hey, you're perverted. Yeah. Hang on. Oh, oh, the beast, Ben Ortiz. Ben Ortiz, you know, he's not going to joke around. Quick cover after a strong lariat. Yeah. And tell me what you know about Ben Ortiz's background. He's never won at House of Hardcore. He's been on a couple of them, but he's very athletic, sneaky size, hard hitting. Yeah, he's got a great background. He's been in a lot of competitive fights, a lot of martial arts, tough man contests and stuff. But Ben Ortiz wanted to make his name in pro wrestling. And he's about to, right? Now! Oh, my God. There's some of that athletic ability from the big fella flying over the top rope with ease. And I've always been impressed by the beast. And now the crowd trying to get Dan Barry some help. You notice Dan Barry rose, rolls to a neutral corner and that cuts the distance of the ring. Dan realizes where he needs to go. He's got to make up about 10 feet to make a tag. Oh. Ben positioning himself between Dan and Dan's partners wise. And you couldn't see it from the camera work, but Ortiz going to the other side, knocked yep. both partners down, and then came and back. No waste in motion. But that's wise, because you'll see, hang on, cover here. No, oh, not enough. You'll see where Dan Barry positioned himself. If Ortiz didn't knock Carr and Maritato off, maybe Barry could have made the tag. The team of Ortiz, Green. i am actually been very impressed with the teamwork right now by these three, cutting that ring in half, so to speak. It's the size of Vic Delicious's team here that's really posed problems. They seem to have isolated, hang on. Green with a cover after the double suplex, and again, only a two count. Isolated Dan Barry. They've chosen Dan Barry, to, I would imagine because of Bill Carr is too big to try to isolate, and Guido Maritato is just too good of a grappler, so sadly, it falls on Dan Barry. And Matt, taking a look at you right now is Green. Misses wildly with the hand up. Oh, oh what a God. throw by Barry. But for Green, as cocky as he is, he's being very arrogant. Now this is the time that Dan Barry needs to get over to that corner. Got nothing between Dan Barry and his corner other than air. It looks like Green's gonna make the tag. Here comes Big Vic Delicious. Can Barry make the tag? No. And wisely, Vic Delicious knocking down his partners. And as I watch Vic Delicious, another name that comes to mind, the late great Louis Spicoli. Another name we'll throw out here. Dan Barry's taken a lot of punishment in this match between this, these three. And, and, and Matt, I look at you, someone who's an in-ring competitor. How much more punishment can Dan Barry take? The fact that, that, that Dan's on his feet helps a lot. It, it really makes a difference. When you're flat on your back or on your ass, man, it's an uphill battle. But Dan's on his feet, and now Dan's on the top rope. And Dan's climbing right now. Whoa! Wow. Big hurt can run off the top. And it's a wise move to do to a bigger opponent because it hurts that much more when your opponent flips off of the top turnbuckle and lands hard. And this Philly crowd trying to get Barry to his corner. He needs a tag so desperately. As you can see, both partners, including his own and team, Come tremendous. And here here and comes tag. Bill Carr, here and comes here Carr. comes Anthony Green. I don't like this matchup oh. for Anthony Green. Wow. Vic Delicious back on his feet. A lot of mass in the ring right now. What? Whoa! Whoa. No way, he Whoa. can! He can! <laughs> Turn around, boss man! Oh! Wow. What a side slam, and right now, oh, wait a minute, Green, what are you doing? Well, Bill saw him the whole way, and Bill Carr is feeling this crowd, feeling the energy that this building brings. Nicely oh. done! Not enough yet. Bang, oh, Sicilian slice! Give me a corner Sicilian with pepperoni. Oh, Vic Delicious back in there, though, as he's clearing house. He's none too he happy, but Bill Carr Bill's here. still on his feet. Ooh. A standing sidekick by a big fella. You don't see a lot of big guys Oh, a standing sidekick. I don't Where's know, Vic going now? I don't know where he's going. And Dan Barry cuts oh, him off. Oh, the toe of Dan's boot just got Vic in the eye. No way. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here's that string left. What a rush. No. What is this? Electric chair. Dan looks like he's going for a moonsault. Everyone's standing up. Whoa. Wow! Slice bread. Cover. He can't um, make the cover. Anthony Green. Uh, Anthony Green just stole an arena moment. And for as young as Anthony Green is, he's made a couple of veteran moves. There's no way Bill's. Come on, Dan. 
You lose a contact. You're way, you're way too big to be thinking what I think you're thinking. Well, he's thinking what you thought he was thinking, and now he's going to act on it. Death. Oh! <laughs> Trying to steal the show is Barry to the top. Barry, shooting star! That's what this building, that's what this promotion brings out of all the boys. The locker room tries to one up each other so they could say that they got this chant here at the House of Hardcore, but wait. Well, there's only one left. Wait a minute. Come on, Pee Wee. Hey man, we are in Philly, so why not? <laughs> oh, Only in House of Hardcore. What the hell is going on? Next thing, this kid will have a store on Pro Wrestling Tees and a podcast. Miss oh, Dupree, hang on. One of the D's. If she moonsaults, though, I'm, I'm going to lose it. The original Gator. Oh, he wants a kiss. Guido wants a kiss. You know, he's Sicilian, and why not? Again. Yeah. Doreen's not watching, buddy. What? Ooh. <laughs> eh, I'd still do it. What? Where is it? Oh. A wrestling move, a wrestling move, perfectly done. Either way, congratulations, Dan Barry, Bill Carr, and Guido Maritato. Oh, God. And by the way, if you're keeping score at home, on Dan Barry's shirt, it's not pineapples, it's actually tacos. Feel bad for that wig. What a night thus far. Here at House of Hardcore 7, Bruce Center. Internet pay per view, HOH7, Victor Leonti, Matt Stryker, with all the action going on right now. And we've taken a look at this match. Still more to come, including another tag team match that'll main event the show, the Young Bucks and the Hardys. important it is for you to be sitting here. Do you know the man that used to sit right here? Joey Styles. Yeah, what Joey. a great guy. We want to give a shout out to Joey Styles. Thank you so much for paving the way for yeah, guys like us. Absolutely. And coming up, we're talking about the Young Bucks. We talked about... Did you get a Bullet Club t-shirt yet? Did you get a Bullet Club t-shirt yet? Ladies and gentlemen, our next match is one ball with a 30 minute time limit. Your referee, Kevin Keenan. Tommy Dreamer. And Bill, we're on that level. Don't forget to keep interacting with us on Twitter and coming to the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring at this time, weighing in at 240 pounds, hailing from the home of the brave Yonkers, New York, Eddie Kingston. Oh, the, the little joke there is the music 
that was playing is indicative of a different wrestler and Eddie Kingston just found a way to swerve the unswervable and get the Philly faithful against him. And Eddie Kingston, a guy who, who's got long arms because he loves to embrace all those that hate him. He's not uh, shy about trying to pick a fight. And his opponent. Today, I love everything you can do, and I'm excited to see Eddie Edwards and Eddie Kingston here tonight. Oh, absolutely, Eddie Edwards, along with his partner Davey Richards, do great things on TNA. And now, for a guy like Eddie Edwards to have the opportunity to come here and hone his craft again, this is what wrestling is all about. We talk about all the time, man. This landscape is changing. Back in the day, you used to have uh, Jim Kettner's ECWA or Mike Quackenbush's Shikara, Steve Carino's PWF. Now, we have places like Ring of Honor, Lucha Underground, TNA, a new breeding ground for a new type of wrestler. And he kicks the toss in the chair and trying to play mind games. And, and Matt, is it is it easy to get into the head of somebody by just sliding the chair into the ring, mind games starting before you even lock up? It, it depends on the psyche of your opponent. And the crowd showing love to Eddie Edwards. Eddie Edwards on the right in the red. Eddie Kingston on the left in the yellow and black. And it looks like Eddie Kingston will enjoy the brawler advantage, whereas Eddie Edwards appears to be a classic wrestler with a nice high-flying blend. And it's going to be fun to watch. Both these competitors do know each other. Both looking to take that next step as individual performers in wrestling. As Kingston starts with a go-behind, and nice quick counter here by Eddie Edwards. Edwards typically a tag team wrestler. Kingston known to tag team as well with Homicide here in House of Hardcore. How difficult can it be to make that transition from tag team wrestling to a single competitor? The only thing is your wind, and that's all it is. You're, you're in there the entire time when you don't have a partner. But both of these guys can wrestle as singles guys, as tag team guys. So that's my witty commentary on that. And Eddie Kingston trying to shake off the uh, early strikes here from Eddie Edwards. As they're going to lock up again. Kylo and elbow tie up. Eddie Edwards grabs the side headlock now, keeping his larger opponent close. Kingston using his size, backs Edwards in, off the ropes now. Nothing doing there. Eddie Edwards challenging him again, or I should say Kingston challenging Edwards again. You know, it's very important to slap both your arms before you do anything. Ric Flair taught me that. Did he not? Now, why is that? I don't know. It's just a habit. Oh, all right. <laughs> I guess it gets the blood flowing. Oh, oh, you heard that. And that Ayato. time, Kingston following in. Edwards, though, ducks the line, comes in with a big kick right to the face. Yeah, this is going to be a very strong style, stiff kind of match. Edwards whipped in, goes up, goes over. Phenomenal athleticism. Now he goes underneath. Whoa. As he gets him into the midsection. And now Edwards lining him up. Oh, oh wow. wow. Shining wizard. Right to the face, only a one count. And Eddie Edwards trained by Killer Kowalski. Quick strikes for Eddie Edwards, son. You're gonna see that as this match goes on. Travel the world, aerial performer can do it on the ground as well. So we'll see how well that he can counteract the brawling style of Kingston. And he hits one suplex, looking for a second. Wow, says a lot of a guy the size of uh, Eddie Kingston. Eddie Edwards is able to use momentum and muscle Eddie over. 